hands-on with new changes and features in iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 Beta 5. Check it out. One of the more noteworthy features in Beta 5 is the ability to adjust icon density for iPadOS 13, allowing you to toggle between either larger icons or more icons on a home screen page at once. So if you go into settings and you go to display and brightness at the very bottom, you're going to see this new option here to show more icons or to show bigger icons. Now, if you choose the more option, you get 30 icons on a home screen page at once. If you choose the bigger option, you just get 20 icons. Now, another thing that you lose when you choose the bigger option is the permanent display of widgets on your home screen page. So if you choose the bigger option, you would simply have to invoke the widgets just like you would when viewing your iPad in portrait mode. So now we switched over to the bigger view. You can see obviously the icons are much larger, but you can see the today view widgets are no longer there. Like I said, you have to just slide those into view just like that to view them. Now notice the icons are bigger, but you have less icons on screen. Notice the last icon is the podcast app. If we go back to the more view, you see the podcast app is not the last icon. You get a lot more on screen. The more option simply gives you a much more information dense view. Now, if you plan on using a mouse with your iPad, you're going to appreciate the ability to adjust the cursor size even further in beta five. So you can make it really small like this, or you can make it larger. So you just drag this little slider to the right to make your pointer even larger just like that. And we're gonna, let's go ahead and just slide it all the way to the left and make it small again. In beta five, the automations tab in the shortcuts app has been removed, but the good news is it's only temporary. You'll notice lots of new home app wallpapers in beta five. So let's see what we have here. We have this sort of bluish green color. You have the yellow color. You have a sort of orange tangerine color, I guess purplish, another green, and finally an even darker green. Beta 5 gives us a more narrow volume HUD design along with haptic feedback when you press the volume buttons. And when using the volume buttons to adjust the volume, you'll notice many more incremental steps between 100% volume and 0% volume. So you can keep pressing like this and the volume changes just a bit with each click. Now compare that with beta four, the changes in volume are much more pronounced with each click of the volume buttons. In beta five, you'll notice new achievements for move goals in the activity app, and you'll find a new redesigned share sheet with grouping. So here at the top, you have your favorites, app related actions followed by everything else. And you'll notice a new black font and black glyphs and an edit actions button below. And there's where you can go to change up your favorites. Simply press the little green button to add to your favorites. And you, of course, you can rearrange those favorites as well. So just tap done and you'll see your new favorites up at the top. And Safari users will be happy to know that the long press action for open and tab is now back. Whereas in the previous beta, it wasn't there, which was super annoying. You'll notice a larger LTE icon in the status bar in beta five. And you'll notice slim down transport controls for media playback in Control Center in Beta 5. Now that dark mode is here, sometimes it's easy to get private mode and dark mode confused whether or not you're actually in private mode or not. But now there are new black icons at the bottom of the Safari interface to help you realize which mode you're in. And speaking of dark mode, you can now assign dark mode to an accessibility shortcut. So with a triple press of the side button, you can automatically enter into dark mode just like that. So you don't have to invoke it from control center, just triple press the side button. You can also now swipe on button headers, for instance, here in the battery section. Previously, you couldn't swipe between the headers, but now you can. And in beta five, you can now invoke the quick action for rearranging apps from dock applications as well. And in iPad OS 13 beta five, you can now add additional pinned favorites to your today view. So previously you can only add two, but now you get the flexibility to add more than that. So we're going to add four and just tap done. 
and you'll see the four pinned favorites on the home screen. And here's something really handy. You can reopen closed windows in App Expose. So say I had two Safari windows open, I closed one of those windows by swiping up, and now you see a new reopen closed window button, just tap that to bring the window back. And now you can merge all windows in Safari. So if I open up Expose, you can see multiple windows, multiple tabs. Watch what happens when I long press on the tab button. I can now merge all windows, tap that, and it merges all those windows so I can access those tabs right in one Safari view, just like that. And lastly, the upcoming Siri for Everyone feature for the HomePod will allow Siri to recognize individual voices and tailor its response based on who's talking. But you'll need a forthcoming HomePod update before you're able to use this feature. So that is a look at what's new in iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 Beta 5. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.